so far we've done exponents that are whole numbers or integers. So now we're going to talk about rational exponents. So if you normally we've done what's called the square root. So the square root means that it's the second root. So the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 is 25. We're taking them out in groups of 2. Okay, so if you have the third root or the fourth root, you could write the third root of a number or the fourth root of a number. You can also write this as an exponent. So this is, if you see this symbol, that's a radical symbol. You can also write it with an exponent. So the square root of a, there's actually a two right here that we don't wrote right, but that's actually a to the one half power. The cube root of a is a to the one third power. So in general, we have four different situations. If n is odd, so if the root is odd, then a has one real root. So the cube root of 27 is just 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So the third root or the cube root of 27 is one answer. That's positive 3. If n is even and a is greater than 0, so the number underneath the radical is greater than 0, then a has two real roots. So the fourth root of 16 you could actually think of as plus or minus 2 because negative 2 to the 4th is 16, and also 2 to the 4th is positive 16. If you take the root of a 0, so actually if this is even or odd, if you're taking the 5th root of 0 or the 4th root of 0, then the answer is 0. Now, the last part, if this is an even root, and the number is less than zero, then it has no real roots. This is going to be an imaginary number. The nth roots of a number may be real or imaginary. We're going to study imaginary on, later, later on in Algebra 1. But you can't take the fourth root of negative 16 because there's no number that when you multiply it four times, you'll get a negative number. Okay, there's no real number. There's an imaginary number, but not a real number. So you can just write not possible, or you can write not real, either one. So down here, finding nth root. So this means find the cube root, because the n is going to be the radical, the cube root of negative 125. So what number, when you multiply it by itself three times, do you get negative 125? The answer is negative 5, because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125. Okay, find the sixth root, or roots, of 64. So because we're finding the sixth root of 64, sixth is even, so there's going to be two numbers, a positive and a negative. So the sixth root of 64 is plus or minus 2, because negative 2 to the 6 is 64, and 2 to the 6 is 64. Okay, are there any fourth roots of negative 81? Well, n is even, and this is a negative number. So no, not real, not possible. Find the cube roots of 8. So a number that when you multiply it by itself three times, that needs to be 8. That number is 2. Now it's not plus or minus because this is an odd root. This one was plus or minus because it was an even root. And then find the fourth roots of 16. So this is the fourth root. It's even, so there's going to be 2, so it's plus or minus 2. Because 2 to the fourth is 16 and negative 2 to the fourth is 16. So having the radical symbol indicates the positive square root of a. The nth root of a, so the nth root of a with an even index indicates just take the positive. So from now on, I'm not going to write plus or minus if I have to take this, 
the sixth root of 64, you only want the positive one, so it's positive two. Okay, so evaluate each. So the cube root of negative 64 is gonna be negative four because negative four to the third power is negative 64. And then this, using order of operations, this is the cube root of negative, cube root of 64 and take the opposite of it. So the cube root of 64 is four, but then we're gonna take the opposite of it, so that's also negative four. So with, the even, with an odd root, it doesn't matter if the negative's on the inside or outside. Okay, let's do the one-third power. So think of that as the cube root of negative 8. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. 16 to the one-fourth is the fourth root of 16, which is positive 2 now we're only taking the positive number if we're writing it as a radical. And this is the fourth root of negative 16. Well, we can't take, if it's an even root, we can't take the nth root or the even root of the negative number because I can't write a real number four times to get a negative number. So this is not real. Okay, now we have written with, like we did a to the one fifth is the fifth root of a, but what if you have a, a number in the numerator and the denominator? So what you can do is you can write them out separately. Whatever your denominator is, is gonna be the root. And whatever your numerator is, is gonna be the power. And it really doesn't matter if you write the the power inside the root or outside, it's actually gonna be the same number. So first part, rewrite in radical form. So I'm gonna write this as the fifth root of a squared. Somebody else could write it as the fifth root of a squared. It's the same thing. So c to the three fifths is the fifth root of c cubed. And I can go backwards over here. I can write this as, as a power. I can write this as b5 is the numerator, and the denominator is always the root. Think about roots being in the bottom and or being in the ground. So the root goes in the ground, the bottom part. And this is p to the eight, the numerator, and five is the root. Okay, now evaluating these without a calculator. So the cube root of negative 125, we actually did that already, is negative 5. Because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125. Now for b, I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite this as a radical. So it's the cube root of negative 64 squared, or it's the cube root of negative 64, all of that squared. So I'm actually, this number is going to be pretty big. Negative 64 squared, I don't know what that is off the top of my head without a calculator. But I know that the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. So negative 4 squared, because of this 2 right here, is positive 16. So the answer is positive 16. So do the root first, then do the power. So do the denominator first. So the square root of 9, then do the power. So the square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the 5th is 3 to the 4th is 81. And 81 times 3 is 243. That's a bigger one to do without a calculator. Um, so I'm going to do the root first. So the 4th root is 256. Then do the power. So the 4 through the 256 is 4, and then 4 cubed is 64. Okay, E, do the root first, so the, do the cube root of 27, 
and then take that to the fourth power. So the cube root of 27 is 3, 3 to the fourth is 81. F, the square root of negative 36. Well, okay, I'm taking the square root, so the even root of a negative number, so it's not real or not possible. So with all of these, if you don't have a calculator, I always do the root first, then the power. Okay, square, the radius r of a sphere is given by this equation. So radius equals 3 times the volume divided by 4 pi, all taken to the 1 third power, or the whole thing is cube rooted. Find the radius of a beach ball to the nearest tenth of a foot, so tenth means one decimal, if the volume is 115. So I'm going to do 3 times 115 over 4 pi, and take that all to the 1 third power. So on your calculator, you guys have TI-30Xs. Um, I would start with the parentheses and do the numerator, which is 3 times 115. Oops. 3 times 115. Divide that by 4 pi. Put 4 pi in the, in the denominator in parentheses. So you want your numerator in parentheses and your denominator in parentheses. And then you want to use the caret symbol and take it to the 1 third power. And put 1 third in parentheses. Because otherwise your calculator is going to take it to the first power and then multiply all of this by 3. So I do this, I get about... 3.016. Um, I have to use my phone, actually, not the calculator. So to the nearest tenth, this approximately is 3.0. And I want to put the zero because I want to show that I rounded to the nearest tenth. I want to show how precise I'm being. Okay, then the second one, just plug in 200. So 3 times 200 divided by 4 pi. All taken, I really need that many parentheses, to the one-third. So you really just want to put your numerator in parentheses divided by the denominator in parentheses. You can do it in multiple steps to press enter and then take it to the one-third power. So on my phone, I got 3.6278. So to nearest hundredth, this would be approximately... So I want to use the approximately symbol to know that I'm rounding. And then to the nearest hundredth would be 3.63. And both of these units should be in feet, actually. I missed the feet for the units. 